Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Catherine with A Perfect Place to Start and today I'm going to be sharing with you 30 farmhouse DIYs. So let's jump in. For this project, I'm using some fence posts that came from Home Depot. We had a couple extra boxes in our garage. If you saw my Easter rustic video, they are similar to those fence posts. Um, they come to six. They come with six in a box, and I am using two boxes today. For this project, I had my husband cut off the top like six inches to use for a different project in this video, and I am just using the bottom half to create a sign. So I'm gluing the two together, and then I'll glue, glue those two sets of two together to have four across to make a wood planked sign. Then I'm going to take this uh, mason jar, which was one of the um, challenge items for today's video and I mixed up some of my agave chalk paint with some water to create a stain and I'm just going to paint this stain onto this mason jar. I wanted it to have like that blue tint like some of the mason jars have. Um, so once I get this all painted onto the mason jar I'm then going to take my antique Waverly wax and I'm going to go over all four of the planks on the front, the sides, and the back. Now that those are all dry, I went ahead and glued the mason jar onto the wood planks and now I'm using some twine to put at the top of the sign to look like it's wrapped around the neck of the bottle. Then I decided to take one of the chalkboard tags that Liz sent me and I tied some twine just where the hole was and made a, uh, just a bow and then I glued it to look like it's hanging from the twine that's wrapped around the bottle. Once I have that all glued on, I'm going to use these awesome flowers that Liz sent me. They are the Solo Wood Flowers and I'm just going to um, glue them up at the top so they look like they're a flower arrangement in the mason jar. Um, I kind of played around with these. I laid them out just so I could kind of decide which ones to put where. Um, these are so beautiful. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to pick some up on my own as well because they were just a lot of fun to work with today. But I just kind of randomly put them um, in there until my eyes were happy and then I went ahead and glued them down. Once I have them all glued down, I decided that the top of this wood planks sign needed something else. So I decided to take some of the burlap ribbon that was also in the box and I just made a little bow and I glued one of the flowers into the middle of the bow. Once I have that all attached to the sign, then this project is complete. This California weather, it's like 90 degrees It's making me hot and he has the same effect on me It's just something about the way that he's making me feel My insides are out, I just wanna shout his name Oh, my body's giving up on me Cause I don't know what to do with my fingertips Oh, I wanna run up through his hair But I'm trying not to stare, mm -mm. I get a little starstruck when I see him I couldn't hit going to use the tops of those wood pieces that we used in the previous project. There are 12 of these. I'm going to take my chippy brush and go with one coat with my white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going for a rustic look here so it's okay if there is wood showing and actually the more wood that's showing better because then it gives it a more weathered rustic look. 
I also painted one of those metal containers from the Dollar Tree. I took off the twine that was at the top and then just gave it two coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. So I'm ready to attach these wood pieces to the outside of the metal tin. I am using hot glue and some E6000 just to give it a more stable hold. They are going to meet at the bottom of the tin so there's going to be space around the top of it where you can see the tin showing through the wood plank. I'm going to go ahead and glue them all around the tin. It actually only takes me about 10 of the wood pieces. Um, I wasn't sure that's why I had went ahead and did all 12, but it actually only took 10. Once I have them all glued on there, I go ahead and wrap some twine around it and tie it in a bow. Um, it doesn't really matter if you tie it in a bow because we're going to cover that part up. I'm taking the birdhouse that I got from Liz as a challenge item and I'm going to go outside and spray it with my French linen Rust-Oleum paint. Once I have that, it only took one coat, I'm going to come back in here with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go over the entire thing with the white Waverly chalk paint. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue it to where I tied the twine bow um, right in front of the planter. Once I get that glued on there, I decide it's just too white and kind of getting lost, so I take my Antique Waverly Wax and I go over the entire thing with my Antique Waverly Wax. I did even fill in the holes that are at the top and the bottom where um, the bell was hanging and the metal piece was hanging. I put some hot glue in those dots and then I just painted over them. You'll see in the picture that it ends up looking like little knobs, like that's how it was attached to the planter. So once I get the Antique Waverly Wax on here, then this project is complete. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Catherine with A Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, home decor, and thrift to treasure. So if that's something you're into, I would love it if you went down, hit the subscribe button, and became a part of my YouTube family. So for this project, I took the love sign that was sent to me and I covered it in my Antique Waverly Wax. And now I'm going to take my white chalk paint and I'm just going to dry brush over the entire thing to distress it. Next I took some twine and I wrapped it around like about six times around the entire wood block. This is also a piece of that fencing. It was just a leftover piece and my husband had been trying to play with what size we were going to cut it and so this one got cut to a smaller size so I decided it was perfect for this project. So like I said, I'm going to take the twine, I'm going to wrap it around about six times and then secure it in the back. Next I'm just going to take the love sign, put some hot glue and attach it to the top and then I'm going to take one more of those solo wood flowers and glue it to the front and then this project is complete.
effect on me It's just something about the way that he's making me feel My insides are out, I just wanna shout his name Oh, my body's giving up on me Cause I don't know what to do with my fingertips Oh, I wanna run through his hair But I'm trying not to stare, mm -mm. I get a little starstruck when I see him I couldn't hit him even if I tried So my husband is using his drill just to pre-drill some holes for the hinges that we picked up at Lowe's. We did not have a drill bit that was small enough to screw in the screw, so we just did those manually. So two hinges are going to go um, into the arched window, and then we're going to attach the other side of the hinges to the picture frame. Uh, we just kind of played around with it a little bit to make sure we liked how it was sitting once we got the picture frame onto the hinges. Um, and then once I did that and had it all attached to each other, I took it outside and spray painted the entire thing with my Rust-Oleum primer um, and other primer paint that I like to use, the white. I use the satin finish. So I did go ahead and put a picture of myself into the frame just so you could get a general idea of what the project looked like all finished. I promise Mary I'm not going to send you a picture of myself. Um, but I do go ahead and reattach the cardboard thing back to the front and then I had found this greenery garland at Walmart over in the floral department. So I had picked that up and then I just cut off a section of that garland wrap, wrapped it around a few times to create a wreath and now I'm going to glue the wreath to the top of the arch window. Next I decide to add some ribbon to the top of this wreath and so I take some buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree I tie it in a simple shoelace bow, I dovetail the ends, and I glue it to the top of the wreath. I do decide to take my sanding block and just go over it slightly to take some of the white paint off. A little bit of the gold shows through and I think that it comes out really nicely like that. Once I'm finished with it, then this project is complete. four of the arch windows for this project and we'll be using six of the hinges. So four of the hinges are going to be in the back and two of the hinges are going to be in the front of the project so it makes an accordion. Now we drilled ours into the plastic part that is in the back and it worked fine but just as a side note you might want to glue that plastic part down uh, because it did kind of flap open a little bit. So I'm using my heat gun just to take off the hot glue where the paper parts were attached and I do that for all four windows and then I took it outside and used my white spray paint again, the Rust-Oleum with the primer in it. And now I'm using my Antique Waverly Wax and I'm just going over all of the project including the insides and the sides on the insides to make sure that when it's standing up and you're looking through it like a window, there aren't any stark white parts um, as you're looking through. So 
So I'm going to do the next step on all four of the windows, but I'm only going to show you on one window. So I'm using this greenery from Walmart and I'm just going to wrap it around into a circle and then it is wire so I just go ahead and fold it over on top of itself um, to secure it in place and then I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to glue this wreath into the middle of the window. Once I have it glued in there I'm going to take that farmhouse ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to tie a simple shoelace bow and glue it into the middle of the wreath. And then, like I said, I'm going to do that three more times on each of the other three windows, and then this project is complete. I'm going to start out with this piece of wood and I'm just going to use my antique Waverly wax and I'm going to stain the entire piece of wood on all four sides and the ends and then I'm going to wipe it off to give it the nice stain look. Once I have that all completed, I'm going to do this technique that I saw on Unicorn Dust Designs channel on her thrift flip video and I will link that video down in my description box. But I'm using my elephant chalk paint and I'm adding some sand from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take one of these um, like chippy brushes that they have at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to mix it together. At first I think I put too much sand in, it's pretty chunky, so I go ahead and I add some more paint to it. I'm going for a concrete look on this um, window pane. I want it to look like um, it's kind of old so um, and, and it's concrete. So the sand is going to give us that texture we need for the concrete look. So once I have that all mixed together into the consistency that I want, then I go ahead and I start painting it onto the window. So here's just some things I learned from doing this. Um, when I was watching her video, she was using glass, and I think that that made a huge difference because this did not really want to adhere to the plastic all that well. Um, I did give it like three coats just because I wanted more of the, sta the sand to stick on there and I felt like the sand stuck more to my brush than it did to the actual window. I am really happy with how it ends up turning out. This was pretty messy. I definitely want to try this again on a different surface um, because I did like how it turned out and I do really think that it gave it a concrete look. Um, like I said though, I think plastic was maybe not the best surface for this. So I go through and do the entire window, all of the insides. I do spray it with a protective clear coat just because I want the sand to stay on. Um, I didn't let it dry quite long enough from the protective coat because you can see my fingerprint in the top, but I just went ahead and went back over that with some gray paint. I go ahead and glue this to the piece of wood and then I'm going to take some Spanish moss and I'm going to glue the Spanish moss all around the bottom of the piece of wood. I do even glue it in between that bottom row of the window so it looks like it's um, growing through there. I was going for like, I don't want to say an old cemetery look, but I guess that's kind of what it ends up looking like, but I was just going for like a stone hedge and um, I really am happy with how it turned out and I really am happy with like the concrete look. I definitely am going to try this technique um, on some other materials, but once I get all the Spanish moss on, then this project is complete.
For this project, we're going to use one of the mason jar signs from the Dollar Tree, and I'm taking some steel chalk paint and some white chalk paint and mixing them together and painting the whole thing. This step is optional, I just wasn't sure if the calendar page would show through, and so I just went ahead and painted it. Once I'm done painting, I'm going to take one of those calendar pages from the farmhouse calendar from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to trace it around the sign and glue it on with some Mod Podge. Once I get the calendar page glued on there, I go ahead and take my sanding block and I go around all the edges to make sure there aren't any loose ends that I can sand off. Once I have that all completed, I take this lamb's ear that I picked up at Walmart and I have five bunches here. I go ahead and cut off the stems and then I'm gluing them at the top of the mason jar. You want to make sure if you're recreating this that your stems are only the length of that silver part where the top of the mason jar would be. That way it looks like a vase. Next I'm going to take some jute rope and this is just some leftover rope that I had and so I just go ahead and wrap it around a couple times until I run out of rope. Um, you could cover the whole thing if you wanted to. And then once I have that done I just kind of fluff out the lamb's ear so it's taking over the whole top. And then I got these spring uh, florals from the Dollar Tree and I just cut them up and stick them in sporadically to give it a really nice spring floral feel. The final piece of this DIY is some ribbon that matches the ribbon that's on the tag that says have faith. I just cut it in an a shoelace bow and glued it to on top of the bow that was there and then this project is complete. For this DIY we're going to take one of those metal planters from the Dollar Tree and I'm just taking some white Waverly chalk paint and going over the twine that's attached to it up there. Then I got these bird stencils and um, I'm just going to take out the bird stencils and I'm going to just randomly place the bird stencils all around my metal bucket. I'm just going to stencil on there with the white Waverly chalk paint again and I just choose several different birds and several different sizes and styles to go around the entire planter. I do go ahead and spray my planter with some matte acrylic spray after I get it all painted on there just to make sure that if the birds were to get wet they wouldn't come off the planter. Um, it did kind of add this kind of weird um, like distressing look on it but I actually really liked it after I got it on there so that's an optional step for you. You could always put Mod Podge over it too to make sure it seals it in. Once I have the birds on there, then I add my floral foam, which came from the Dollar Tree, and these butterfly stickers. I'm going to make a really easy pick for my um, planter. I should have bought two packages of the same butterflies. I bought separate ones, and since I'm putting them back to back, it would have been nice if they had matched. So if you're going to recreate this, buy two packages of the same butterflies. 
As I was shopping online at the Dollar Tree website, I did see these stickers on there, so if you aren't able to find them in your store, these are definitely something that you could pick up on the Dollar Tree website. Now I'm going to stick my pick into the floral foam, and it's pretty hard because I, I did put the really stiff foam in there. Once I get it in there, I'm ready to add my greenery. This is boxwood greenery from Walmart, and I'm just um, rat, like adding it all around so that you can't see any of the inside of the planter. The cream colored pick is just something I had left over in my stash, and I thought it would look kind of cool for a contrast. It's definitely optional. It's super cute with just the greenery. Once that's completed, then this project is complete. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Catherine from A Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, home decor, and thrift to treasure. So if that's something that you're into, I would love it if you went down, hit the subscribe button, and became a part of my YouTube family. For this project, we're going to take one of those Dollar Tree tins and some of the jute rope from the Dollar Tree, and we're just going to wrap the entire tin with the jute rope. This is one of those products on their website that you are able to buy in a smaller quantity and I definitely am going to shop for that myself. Um, last year I wasn't able to find much of the jute rope. I think I was like my store was sold out in June and it never had any more jute rope come back in until like almost Christmas. And so there was a lot of product projects that I wasn't able to complete. So I'm excited to be able to buy that online and have uh, more quantity of that. Once I have the bucket completed, I'm ready to do the moss balls and I'm just taking some of the floral moss and some styrofoam balls and we're recreating those ever popular moss balls that are the Pottery Barn dupe. So it takes me about a package and a half of the floral moss and I create three balls and one styrofoam bunny for spring. Um, I'm just using hot glue and just mashing it all around. Definitely use those plastic fingers. I <laughs> burnt myself a couple times just without noticing that the glue was there. Once I have the balls and the bunny all completed, then I put some tissue paper in my bucket and I'm taking some Spanish moss. I'm going to spread the Spanish moss out all over the tissue paper so you can't see it and it gives it some height. And then I'm going to lay my balls and bunny into the tin.
So for this DIY, we're going to take some wooden letters that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Uh, they do come in a pack of two. And then I also picked up this windmill cutout that they have in the wood section and I'm replacing the O in house with this windmill and I'm using my antique Waverly wax and I'm just staining all the letters and then I kind of dry brush the antique wax over the windmill to give it more of a distressed look. I also picked up this sign at Hobby Lobby so it was the exact size I was looking for. It already had the border and everything. It was half off so I paid about $7 for it. I thought that that was a really great deal considering if I tried to make this from uh, Dollar Tree signs I probably would have came close to making to spending about that same amount. So I just do a very light coat of dry brush with the antique wax over that whole white part and now I'm ready to put my letters onto the sign. So I'm just using my ruler to make sure that I'm going to glue them on in a straight line. I did measure on the sides to make sure that they were the uh, same length from each side. And then I'm just going to take some hot glue, glue down the letters, and then this project is complete. For this DIY, I'm going to take some thrifted items that I picked up at a garage sale and I'm going to start with this candlestick. I'm using some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm only going to give it one coat over the entire candlestick. That way I get a nice distressed look without having to use any other materials. Since the candlestick was already brown, it gives it like the antique wax look without using the antique wax. Then I'm going to do the same technique over the tray. The tray does end up taking about two coats of paint because it just looked uh, like it didn't have enough coverage with the one coat.
When I flipped the tray over, someone had used some felt padding to keep it from scratching probably a tabletop or something. I tried really hard to remove those and I just couldn't get them to come off and I didn't want to damage the tray. So instead I decided to just go ahead and paint over them. You can't tell by the time I get it all glued on that it was even there. So I did take out my pieces and spray them with a matte coat of protective coating that way that the paint is not going to rub off. It did give the candlestick this weird yellow look on the top uh, but I don't care it's going to get covered up but just be careful when you're using your matte spray if you're covering something that's painted that it doesn't give it this weird color. I then go ahead and decide to use E6000 glue to give this a more permanent hold and then I use my hot glue for the temporary hold. So I go around the top uh, and then I'm just going to put the tray on top of the candlestick, press down firmly and then I'm ready to decorate the inside. So now I'm going to place some eucalyptus that I picked up at a garage sale for 50 cents. It was an actual full bundle. I was pretty excited. And I love the way that eucalyptus smells. So once I get it all placed in there, I'm going to take some lemons that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to randomly place those around the eucalyptus. And once I have that all done, then this project is complete. Project, I'm going to take this mini spice rack that I also picked up at a garage sale and some nautical folk art chalk paint and I'm going to paint the entire spice rack with this blue paint. Once I'm finished with the blue paint I'm going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and my chippy brush and I'm going to cover the entire spice rack with the white paint as well. Once those steps are completed, I'm ready to fill my spice rack, so I'm taking these little mini terracotta pots that I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to fill them with some sprigs of lavender that I picked up at Walmart, and then this project is complete. I'm mm -hmm. 
For this project we're going to take this wagon. It was gifted to me by a friend. It was full of some fall decor. I removed all of the fall decor, cleaned out the inside, and now I'm ready to just give it some paint. So I decided to go with white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to go ahead and give it two coats on the metal part and the wood parts, and then one coat on the burlapy looking part. Um, I do go ahead and do the inside of the wagon as well as the under part of the wagon just in case uh, wherever I decided to display it you wouldn't be able to see any of the brown sticking out. Once the paint is finished, it's looking amazing. I'm so excited with how it's turning out. I just went ahead and put some floral foam into the middle and then I'm taking some florals that I had left over from last year. They are also from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna fill in this arrangement so that you can't see the inside of the wagon. And once I have that finished, then this project is complete. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Catherine with The Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, home decor, and thrift to treasure. So if that is something you're into, I would love it if you went down, hit the subscribe button, and became a part of my YouTube family. For this project, we're going to take this picture frame that I picked up at a garage sale for a dollar. I'm going to remove the top part that has this bow and Christmas trees hanging from it. Um, I finally cut it off only to realize later that it was actually put on there with a staple from a staple gun. So I use my pliers and remove the staple. Then I'm going to use my sanding block and I'm just going to go over the entire frame and get off all of the red glitter from the frame. Next I take some Waverly White chalk paint and I go over the entire frame with my chalk paint. It takes me about three or four coats to get all of the red Next, to Next I take some wire through. garland that I picked up at Hobby Lobby in the party section and I just wind it around a few times to I get the desired size of the wreath that I want to hang on the picture frame. Once I have that in the desired circle that I like, I go ahead and kind of fold it over a little bit at the top because it is wire, it holds it together, and then I just kind of um, play around with it, make it into the circle, and then I'm going to glue it to the top of the house. Once I get the wreath glued on there, I'm going to take this buffalo check ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. I tied it in a simple shoelace bow. I'm cutting, or I'm dovetailing the ends and gluing it onto the top of the wreath, and then this project is complete.
For this project, I'm taking these two bowls that I got at a thrift store. They are crate and barrel bowls, and at first I wanted to use them for just bowls. But the bigger bowl it has some nicks and a chip on the top, and so I decided to go ahead and make them into planters. I'm using some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I did unwind the nautical rope, so I have three pieces now instead of one big piece. And I'm just going to glue and twist all around both of the pots. Because I untwisted the nautical rope, it only takes me two packages of the nautical rope to do both of the bowls. Once that step is complete, I'm going to add some newspaper into the bottom of these bowls. I am out of floral foam, so I figured this would just be an okay alternative. Since I'm using fake succulents, I figured it wouldn't make that big of a difference. So it took one piece of newspaper in the smaller bowl and then two pieces of newspaper in the larger bowl. Once I get the newspaper in, I'm going to go take my succulents and add them to the bowls. I got these succulents at the Dollar Tree. I just sort of play around a little bit adding them to the bowls until I get the desired look that I'm going for. I add two succulents to the smaller bowl and three succulents to the larger bowl. Once I get the succulents into the pots and I have the Spanish moss all arranged, then this project is complete. For this project we're using one of those wooden frames from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to remove the picture insert and the backing uh, little dowel that goes in the back. I'm going to use that same rose gold folk art paint and I'm going to cover the entire wood frame with the paint. So back and front, the sides and the little dowel that goes to the back of the picture frame.
I did only use one coat of the paint on the picture frame. This paint goes on fairly lightly, so when you paint it on, um, it looks kind of like a stain, and I like that because then the wood is showing through the paint color, and I feel like that's what gives it the farmhouse look. So I'm taking some more of that TotallyDazzle.com bling wrap. I took a piece, I measured it around the front, and then I cut that piece off of the big roll. Once I had that piece cut off the big roll, I cut that piece in half, and I'm going to glue that onto our picture frame with the two sides um, glued on in the back. So next I'm going to take one of these bling brooches that I also got from totallydazzle.com. They did send these to me so I could try them out and I have to say they are pretty amazing. They can be a pin, they do have like a pin attachment on some of them so you could actually wear these. But I have seen some pretty amazing things made out of these. They're very heavy, high quality, and pretty awesome. So if you want to check them out, the link is down in my description box. But I'm just going to glue that onto the middle and then this project is complete. I found the wall again Beautiful woman Sometimes we simply fall out Beautiful woman Beautiful woman Tied to your loving a doubt, beautiful woman And all the things I didn't say There's wrecking balls inside my brain Standing tall with all my faith There's empty voices in my head And they will always be around Until I found the one for this project we're going to use these little boxes from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to remove the little drawers that came with it and set those aside for a separate project. I'm going to use, to use these bottom boxes and we're going to be making some planters out of this. So since today's theme was a girls night out, I had more in mind of a girls night in and whenever I have people over or I'm hosting some kind of party like book club or something like that, I always like my guests to go home with some kind of party paper. So that's what I had in mind when I created this DIY. So once I have those boxes covered with that one coat of the rose gold paint, I cut one strip of the bling wrap and then I measured around the box and then I cut it into thirds so I would have a piece for each one of the boxes. Once I have the bling wrap wrapped around and hot glued to each of the boxes, I'm going to take another one of the jewels from totallydazzle.com and these some of these come with the pins as a brooch and then some of them are just um, by themselves that you can use as an embellishment. I take um, three of the ones that I thought looked like the best here and I go ahead and glue them on into the middle of the boxes. Once I have those all glued onto the middle of the boxes, I take some floral foam, glue it into the bottom of the box, and then I'm going to take some Dollar Tree roses. And I picked out pink and white just because pink seemed to be the theme for me today. I'm going to go ahead and arrange those into the boxes. Then I'm going to take some green like raffia pieces kind of and I'm going to glue those into the bottom of the floral arrangement which gives it that farmhouse feel and then this project is complete.
So this piece came from a garage sale and it was originally $11.99 and I paid $2 for it. So, and then I'm going to use this um, bicycle piece that I picked up at the Dollar General. If you missed my Dollar General Dollar Tree haul, I will put that up here in the cards. Um, but we're going to start by just using some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to cover this whole sign with the white Waverly chalk paint. Now this step is kind of optional because we're using contact paper. Um, I just wasn't sure if the contact paper was going to show through and I just decided to go ahead and paint. So this contact paper came from Walmart. It is the Pioneer Woman contact paper. I did another project, an actual flip with this um, contact paper as well. I'll link that here up in the cards and in my description box, but I made a boot tray using this same um, contact paper. So all I'm doing is I'm laying it down, flattening it out, and, and smoothing it as I go along. So one tip there if you shy away from contact paper um, is that you just need to kind of go in little pieces with it. Don't take the back off all the way because sometimes that's when you have problems and it gets kind of sticky and messed up. So after I get it on there, I do have a couple little pieces like down in the bottom of the sign that uh, you can see it is missing some of the contact paper. I do go ahead and go back and fill in some little pieces with that. But I'm using my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going over the sides so that they blend in together. And then I decided that I just really wanted to dry brush the whole thing. So I took my paint and I just went over the whole thing so it blends in with the sign and it gives it a distressed look. So I took that bicycle piece outside and sprayed it with my Rust-Oleum white spray paint that has primer. It took two coats and then I also put in these little hooks that come from one of those um, picture frame holders from the Dollar Tree. I had my husband screw those in for me and then I'm ready to glue on my bicycle. So I'm just using hot glue, putting it in various places, it, places and attaching it to the side. I am filling in the little holes where the hanger was and the welcome sign with some hot glue and then I just go back over that with my white Waverly chalk paint. I am going to use the welcome sign that came with the bicycle. I'm going to hang it down where the hooks are. So next I'm going to take some paint and I'm going to paint the flowers and the leaves that are on the top of the bicycle and I will list all of the, um, all of the supplies down in my description box in case you want to check out the actual colors that I use. And then um, I just kind of uh, paint it all on there and I do go over it with some white Waverly chalk paint in the end. I promise I don't show all of my painting here. I just want you to see um, basically that I had different colors here and then I go ahead and use the cashew in the middle of the flower and then I kind of dry brush over the whole thing. Um, and then I do go ahead and attach the welcome sign at the bottom using the chains that came with the welcome sign. And then once I have that all finished, then this project is complete. and I spray painted it with my Krylon color match spray paint that I picked up at Lowe's. Um, it is, um, I just love the color, it's very summery. And then I'm taking my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to distress this entire basket with the white Waverly chalk paint. 
I picked up this bicycle wood cutout over at Hobby Lobby. I believe it was a dollar forty nine, and I'm just going to cover it with some lightweight really chalk paint, and then I'm ready to attach it to my basket. Here's the basket all distressed with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to just go ahead and hot glue my bicycle onto the basket. I go ahead and add an arrangement that I made in a previous DIY and I'll link that here in the cards um, if you want to check out how I made the arrangement. But once I have this all glued on, then this project is complete. For this project we're going to use two of these birdhouse signs that came from Dollar General and a box from the Dollar Tree. I'm also using some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So I've already traced around the back of the scrapbook paper of our pieces and now I'm going to remove this metal part of the birdhouse sign off of both of the signs. I then am going to take some sandpaper, just my sanding block actually, and I'm going to sand off any excess glue or paper that is left there. Now I'm going to glue on the paper that I've already cut out all around the sides of the box and to both sides of the birdhouse sign. I am just using a glue stick here. If you feel like you would rather use Mod Podge, you can definitely use Mod Podge instead. Now that our paper is glued onto our birdhouse signs, I'm just taking my sanding block again and I'm going over the edges to get any of that excess paper that might be hanging off. I want the tops of these birdhouses to look aged, so I'm taking my antique Waverly Wax and I'm just going to go over the entire metal pieces with the antique Waverly Wax and let it dry. While that's drying, I'm going to take this magnet and draw a circle up at the top of the birdhouse sign to give it the hole for the house look. Then I'm going to take my ink by Waverly Chalk Paint and I'm just going to paint in the hole. I'm going to do this on one side of each of the birdhouse signs. We are now ready to assemble our birdhouses and so we're just going to take some hot glue and glue it off the roof back to the top of the birdhouse sign. The thing that I really like about this project is it really could be customized for anything. We're making this for Mother's Day, but this would make a really great birthday gift um, or a just because gift. Next we're going to take these Dollar Tree stickers and we're just going to place them at the bottom of the birdhouse sign. This one says you're the best and then the other sticker is just a kind of vintage bird. You could definitely customize this for anything that your mom might like. These were just stickers that I thought reminded me of my mom's style. So 
So we're ready to assemble our planter box. We're just going to take the one birdhouse sign and glue it to one front of the box and then the other birdhouse sign to, I guess, essentially the back of the box. But make sure that the birdhouse is facing outward so it's a two-sided planter. Next, we're going to put some floral foam into the box. I did eventually glue, um, I started out with one piece of floral foam, but I felt like it wasn't high enough. So I did go in and glue two in there. And now we're ready to assemble the flowers. And then once the flowers are assembled, this project is complete. For this project, I'm taking two of these smaller Happy Easter signs that I got at the Dollar Tree. I am using some wood glue and I'm going to glue these two signs together. If you can't find the Easter signs, they have these signs all the time for all different holidays at the Dollar Tree. Once I get my wood glue in, I'm going to take these giant popsicle sticks and I'm going to use hot glue to glue those down to give it a more stable hold. When I'm finished with this project, I will go back and put some brown craft paper over the back of this part to give it a more uh, high-end finish look since this is going to be a gift. I flipped the signs over and this is the side we're going to be using. I did decide to go ahead and put some wood glue here as well. I just wanted to have a very strong permanent hold. So after I get the glue on there, I do let it dry a little bit and now I'm ready to add some scrapbook paper. So this is coming from that same stack of scrapbook paper that I had gotten at Hobby Lobby. You can buy all kinds of different scrapbook paper at Hobby Lobby by the sheet. So if you didn't want to buy a giant pack of it, you could also just buy this for however many sheets you're going to need. I used two pieces of scrapbook paper to cover the entire sign. So now I'm going to take these little galvanized mini frames from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue them onto this frame and I'm just centering them. I did measure from each side to make sure that they were even. I did go over my scrapbook paper with Mod Podge and now I'm going over it with some Antique Waverly Wax. I do go over the entire project just to give it a more richer wood look. Now I am ready to assemble the rest of this DIY. I took these poster stickers from the Dollar Tree and I spelled out friends forever and I did go ahead and go back over them with some Mod Podge once I had them on. And then next to each of the words I'm going to use three bigger buttons that I also got at the Dollar Tree. Once I have that all on the sign then this project is complete. I'm 
If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Catherine with A Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, home decor, and thrift to treasure. So if that is something you're into, I would love it if you went down, hit the subscribe button, and became a part of my YouTube family. For this project, I'm using one of these Dollar Tree signs. I did go ahead and pop off that middle circle, and then I'm using some scrapbook paper that came from Hobby Lobby. This is one of my very favorite signs from the Dollar Tree. I think there's so many fun things you can do with it. I'm just going to attach that scrapbook paper with my glue stick and then I'm going to take this metal, or it's not metal, the middle circle and I'm going to cover it with a couple coats of white Waverly chalk paint. This step really isn't necessary if you're using a heavier paper. I just used regular copy paper and I wanted to make sure that the print from the other side didn't come through. I just drew around my wording and then I cut it out and I'm mod podging it onto the circle. Now I'm taking my Agave Waverly chalk paint and I'm just dry brushing around the edges and then I go ahead and dry brush in the middle as well just to give it some added texture and color that matches the scrapbook paper we already glued to the bottom part of the sign. I'm ready to hot glue my circle back onto my scrapbook paper and so I just put a generous amount of hot glue and put it right down in the middle of the sign. We're ready to assemble some buttons around our saying. I do have a bow here, I end up not liking it and I take it off. Once I have the buttons on then this project is complete. For this DIY, I'm going to start out with some white Waverly chalk paint and I have two different sizes of terracotta pots. I'm just going to be painting them with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm only going over with it or going over the pots with the paint with one coat because I want it to look dry brushed and distressed and so I want there to be the terracotta coming through. Now that I have them all painted, I'm just going to take some wire that I had for like scrapbooking, but you could use any wire here that you can pick up at Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store, and I'm just putting the wire through the holes and wrapping it around the wreath form. And I'm just um, going various sizes as I go around. I wasn't sure how many were going to fit here, so I'm just kind of playing with it and attaching them until I get all the way around the wreath. Next I'm going to take my grass and I'm going to put it into each one of the pots. This is some floral filler that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I am going to use some hot glue just to make sure that the grass doesn't fall, up, fall out as it's hanging up as a wreath. And then once I get all of the grass glued into the pots, I'm going to go back in with some succulents that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Some of these succulents have some clips on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the clips and then I'm going to stick them into the pots. And once I have them into the pots, then this project is complete.
to dry Even when the sun begins to shine again Taking all the advice there is and none of it has helped Experience has made me realize that I won't build my life on empty words Being so damn naive, it only hurts I'm so tired So I'm going to be using one of these wine o'clock frames. I don't know if they're really frames, but they're glass pictures that they have at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be taking off all of the etching that said wine o'clock. I tried um, just scrubbing it off. That didn't work. So I ended up using a Brillo pad. And um, in case you're wondering, no, it didn't scratch the glass. You just have to kind of go slowly with it. And then once I get that all off, I just clean it good with some Windex. And then I am ready to start this DIY. So the frame is already white but I wanted it to be a brighter white so I'm using my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to cover the entire frame with the white Waverly chalk paint. I get asked a lot about my glue gun stand and it actually was a gift for my husband for Christmas a couple years ago but um, I did find one that is really similar or actually the same it could be on Amazon and so that will be linked down in the description box along with as many of the supplies that I could find that I used for today's projects. So once I get all of the white paint onto my tray that we're creating now I'm taking some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm making my handles and so I'm just gluing them onto the top of this picture frame. Once I get the handles glued on, I'm ready to start doing the rest of this tray. And all I'm doing is using some broken pieces of some um, terracotta pots that I had that unfortunately broke and I was trying to use them up. And so I thought that this would be a fun way to do that. So I'm just going to glue them all around the top of the tray and then this project is complete. Teardrops start to dry Even when the sun begins to shine again Taking all the advice there is And none of it has helped Experience has made me realize That I won't build my life on empty words So this project is a super simple project. It is a Wayfair dupe. I had seen a set of jute coasters on their website for about $28 for a set of four. We're going to be recreating a set of six for around $4. So you can pick up the coasters at Dollar General. Um, I think they're like $2 for a set of six. Uh, they might be a dollar actually and then i picked up my jute rope at walmart in the automotive department you could use dollar tree nautical rope here or you could use uh, the nautical rope on amazon which ends up being a little bit cheaper um, if you factor in the footage that you're getting from dollar tree versus amazon and i'll have a link down in my description box if you want to check that out so all we're going to do is once we have that glued in the middle of the coaster we're going to start wrapping it around that middle piece and we're going to go all around the entire coaster. Once we get to the end of the coaster, we'll repeat that five more times and then we'll have a set of six coasters and this project will be complete.
So this project is a Pottery Barn dupe and we're going to be using some jute rope and some old placemats I got from a friend who was getting rid of them. I saw this on the Pottery Barn website and I knew that we could recreate this for a lot cheaper. And so all I'm going to do is I marked the center of my placemat and I'm going to take my um, nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just glue it down there into the center of the placemat. Once I have it glued there then I'm going to start twisting it around. Make sure you're holding it really tight because you don't want to have any gaps between the nautical rope as you start to twist because then you'll be able to see the underneath of the placemat. So as you're twisting just make sure it's super tight and you're not you don't have to glue the entire thing. You can um, and just glue in small pieces that way you don't have like a gloppy mess by the time that you get to the end and all you're going to do is wrap it around the placemat until you get to the very end of the placemat you're going to do that i believe i have six placemats here so we're going to have a set of six and then this project will be complete So I picked up this little treasure chest on Marketplace and I'm going to give it a new look and a nice fresh farmhouse look. So I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and a foam brush and I'm just going to lightly go over the entire chest with my white Waverly chalk paint. Dry brushing things that have texture is so much fun because you get such a really fun look with the texture that's there. When you don't have texture, sometimes you have to like improvise and do a lot more dry brushing and things like that to add the texture. But when something already has it, it's so much fun to see um, what it looks like once you give it a coat of paint. So after I get that one coat of paint, I do do the inside as well. Here is what it looks like. And we're going to make this into a planter. So I'm going to take two of the little pots that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree, those little plastic ones, and some floral foam from the Dollar Tree as well. This um, 
lavender also came from the Dollar Tree, I think, or it came from Walmart. One of the two, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just going to cut it apart and then I'm going to stick it into my little pots. And then once I have my pots as full as I want them to be, and I believe it's a bundle in each pot, then I'm going to put the pots into the treasure chest and then this project is complete. For this project, I'm taking an old shutter that I had in my garage and I'm taking some spackle from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to fill in the little holes from where it was attached to something. And then once those are filled, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give this shutter a good coat of the white paint. It is totally crazy how much different it looks when you start getting the paint on there. It doesn't look like it's that dirty, but once I started painting with this dark white paint, I was like, whoa, this is super dirty. So I'm glad I went ahead and covered it with a good coat of the paint. And I do go ahead and open the shutter so that I can get all the pieces of the shutter with the paint. I'm ready to add some aged look and distressing to it so I'm using my antique Waverly wax and a rag and you'll see here in a minute that I put on way too much and I have to go back and put some paint back on but that's the fun of it as my friend crafty weenie says make it till your eyes smile so just keep going and adding in and taking away until you're happy with it so once I get it all to where I like it here is the final look of just the shutter and I'm ready to add my accessory so I'm just going to take a wicker wreath from the Dollar Tree and some eucalyptus from Walmart. I'm just going to cut it apart, make a simple wreath, and all I'm doing is sticking it into the wicker, not even using hot glue, and then I'm going to attach it to the shutter, and then this project is complete. Even when my teardrops start to dry Even when the sun begins to shine again taking all the advice there is and none of it has helped experience has made me realize that i won't build my life on empty words being so damn naive it only hurts i'm so tired For this project, I'm using a uh, unfinished wood uh, welcome sign that they had at the Target Dollar Spot, and this is so simple. All I'm doing is painting it with some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to go over it with some antique wax and get all the front and back and in between the spaces, and then this project is complete. So I'm taking one of those banners that they have in the Target dollar spot and these are wood and they do have like a clothespin on the back that um, you could hang children's artwork on if you wanted to and then those 
unfinished wood parts like hang up on the wall. So once I get them covered with some white Waverly chalk paint, then I'm taking my B stencil and I'm going to put that in the center of every other circle. And I'm going to put my B there. And then on the other circles that are blank, I'm going to use my honeycomb stencil and I'm going to do that on the opposite ones. And once I have that finished, then this project is complete. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, I hope you're totally inspired and you're out there crafting right now. As always, wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start. And I will see you guys in the next video.